Hey everybody, JT here, Serenity Farms Prepping. Gave you a little look-see of the compound this morning. Uh, wood stove's cranking. And unfortunately, New York State and Ocho have found a court to overturn the decision that was made last year quashing her desire to institute quarantine camps. Let's take a look at that and talk about the ramifications for people like me. So, the New York State Court Appellate Division reinstates Ochil's power to enforce Quarantine measures, including indefinite detention. But it's much worse than indefinite detention. So the New York State, New York Supreme Court's Appellate Division recently overturned a lawsuit challenging Rule 2.13, reinstating Ochoa's authority to detain citizens indefinitely in quarantine camps. This decision was made after a coalition of state lawmakers and the citizen group Uniting New York State filed a lawsuit in April 22 contesting the rule that grants state and local health authorities the power to put New Yorkers suspected of having an infectious disease, okay, infectious disease, under mandatory isolation or quarantine. Attorney Bobby Ann Flowercox, representing the petitioners, warned of potential abuse, you think, under Rule 2.13, stating it allows the Department of Health to pick and choose which New Yorkers they can lock up or lock down without any proof that you're sick, without any proof you've been exposed to a communicable disease. The rules reinstatement follows a July decision by New York Supreme Court Judge Ronald Plotz, who had initially ruled in favor of the plaintiffs, also known as us, we the people, declaring Rule 2.13 unconstitutional. However, <sighs> this woman. New York AG Letitia James appealed the ruling, leading to the recent appellate court decision. The court's dismissal of the lawsuit was based not on the case merits, but on the claim that the plaintiff lacked standing. Now, where have we heard that numerous times since 2020? Plaintiffs lacked standing. Standing. It's an easy excuse to just disregard all the evidence and proof that you have. Cox criticized the court's rationale, arguing that it implies only those already detained have the right to sue. She contends the legislator plaintiffs were injured because Governor Ocho and her Department of Health usurped their legislative authority. With this latest ruling, Governor Hochul once again has the authority to enforce public health measures, including detaining individuals in quarantine facilities under the guise of public health. This development raises significant concerns about individual liberties in the face of public health emergencies. Okay, so, in last year's video, which was me going through the actual bill, it clearly states that you only have to be suspected of a health issue, or someone can rat you out and say that you have a potential health issue and you can be 
hauled in. It also stated that Ocho has authorized the DOH, the Department of Health, that they can designate someone who can designate someone who can designate someone. Basically, at some point... A literal Joe Schmo off the street could be designated by the proper authorities to go determine if someone is a public health concern. Now, if someone gets sick, They normally stay home until they feel better. If at all possible, they stay home. They do what they have to do to get themselves well. If they have to go out, they take every precaution to avoid people as much as possible. So we all know this has nothing to do with public health. As I stated in the video last year, sorry about that. This has everything to do with removing extremist, national, Christian, conservative, white, uh, deplorable, Bible-thumping people like us. Dissidents. People who do not agree with the deep state, globalist, socialist, communist, demonic agenda. That's what this is all about. So I was seeing comments on another channel... That people were saying, well, we need proof that quarantine camps are being built and supposedly they're all around New York State, but we haven't seen any videos of them being built. Well, the original case that had been brought forward did have a video of something being built. But as a former employee of DOCS, or the Department of Correctional Services, I can tell you that at least 10 correctional facilities have been shuttered, closed, since I retired almost 14 years ago. Almost all of these facilities are quite new, built 89, 90, 91, that's new for these facilities, especially a brand new build. The overwhelming majority of these facilities were classified as medium facilities. All that really means in terms of security is that there's a 16-foot high chain link fence with the razor wire pointing in and the convicted felons there could be doing zip to life for various crimes to a one to three little skid bid. So, these facilities have dormitories. One of the one I worked at had eight different dormitories, such as A, B, C. But each one, there was an A1 and an A2. Then there was B1, B2. Each side normally held only 40 to 50 convicts. But they were equipped with rec rooms with a TV a stove and cooking area, three washers and dryers, and 
Everyone had their own little cubicle with a locker and personal items. They would leave to walk and go to the mess hall when called. And the same thing when it was their turn to go to the yard or their turn to go to the gym or if they all had to go to school or different classes or work. Point. And at some point, those facilities were all double bunked. A second bunk was put on almost every cube already there, and population rose from 400 to over 800. They even took the huge, ginormous gymnasium and double bunked that to hold two or 300, and then built bubbles those white sporting facility bubbles you see all over the place for indoor soccer and stuff like that. Every facility erected one of those in record time. So instead of going to the gym, you were going to the bubble. Those facilities could be brought back online within 24 hours. Now they would all have to have food delivered. They have huge mess halls and kitchens and powerhouses. Those would have to all be fired back up. They got to find people to staff these. Uh, there's a Sally Port gate with double locking gates, trucks in and out, a tower to view all the trucks coming in and out. These things would be easy peasy to become quarantine a.k.a. re-education camp. Make no mistake, these are not for public health quarantines. People know how to do that on their own. This, if allowed to proceed because it's being appealed, I imagine that it will go out of New York State for the appeal. But... This, New York, is not the only state preparing for this. But if New York's allowed to get away with this, because right now she has the authority to do it, all she needs is a public health emergency, or so-called, doesn't even have to have anyone sick. But they'll set this up with more scam hospital overflows, people sleeping in the halls, a hundred cases of maybe the new chai com pneumonia sweeping that country. They need room. And voila, you'll see one of these open or maybe a closed China Mart somewhere. But these facilities are already set up. If they're going to do this, they're going to use them. I'll bet you they're going to use them. And unlike the inmates who went there, these will be one-way trips in many cases. Remember when Australia had their issues, they quarantined, they built hundreds of camps, hundreds of beds in camps, and put people in them, and they were locked in individual rooms 24 hours a day, but it was just what you expect. What do we have that Australia doesn't have? What do we have that every other country doesn't have? Question is, do we have the nuts? All right, that's all I got for now. Jake T. Signing.